You want to set the internet on fire? Sure. Let's do it. How do we get there? Tony Khan has done more to harm wrestling than Vince Russo ever done. Someone like a Darby Alley, uh, Allen, who's already, um, you know, not the not the most physically intimidating person. So he is using his body as a weapon, which is advantageous to his character, which makes him look like a scrappy dude type of character, which I can appreciate that. That's that's turning a, a negative, so to speak, into a positive. I can appreciate that from Darby. But the problem is, though, when you're thinking of your career longevity wise and you're using your body to an advantage, you're using your body as a weapon, how do you petition to someone like a Tony Khan that I'm already not physically, uh, you know, the top guy, but now I'm injured and I'm making these bumps and I'm doing all this wacky stuff that I'm going to be injury prone. How do I petition to Tony Khan to make me the world champion? And if I'm just a swanton away from being shell for six months, and then he would have to switch it up just like that. I got it. I know how. I yeah. know how. Yeah. You go on Reddit, you buy a bunch of bots saying you should be the world champion, and he'll go, oh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but gotcha. you see, Chris, like that is that really is how clueless Tony Khan is, because if, if I, I always hate to go back to this, we're, bro, we're going to go back to this till the day we die. If it's Vince McMahon, OK, Vince is looking at Darby Allen as, you know, a talent who is making him money. Mm -hmm. So Vince would would not want him to do, especially if there's a pay-per-view coming up or we, we got big plans for you. Vince would have that conversation with you like, bro, I'm, I'm banking on you to make like that's not even in Tony Khan's head. And I don't know if it's because he's a billionaire. I mean, Vince was a billionaire, bro, but he was still in the game to make money. So, you know, like Tony isn't even thinking, OK, bro, if Darby dives off a 20 foot ladder and goes through a pane of glass to the concrete, you know what, bro? He may be out for the next six. He's not even thinking that, bro. Yeah, I don't think either one of them are. I, I think either I think both of them are just very immediate gratification. Just, you know, thinking in the now, which just isn't. It's just not. It's not a good. It's not good business, and it's not good a, a good way of, of thinking as well. I mean, like you gotta you gotta think the end game. You gotta think long long term. And if this person is just basically a stunt man here, I'm not gonna. As a businessman, you want me to depend on you to at least have a three month run with my top title, and every single match is rolling the dice of you being out six months. There's no way that I would put the belt on you because that I would have to rewrite stuff just like that, and every match is a risk. And not only that, Chris, on top of that, and I think EC3 would agree to this, bro, you have more favor with the company when you don't get hurt mm -hmm. and they can depend on you and they can call you the last minute and put you in this. that Bro, that's why I put the belt on, on Double J. It's not that he was my boy. The guy was such a good wrestler and, and always protected. He was never hurt. Mm -hmm. So I knew, bro, I was always going to be able. So w when you're one of those performers, bro, you got big time favor with the office, man. Yeah. EC3, can you attest to that? Yeah, I would say one big thing, especially coming up in the systems, was coachability and durability yeah. were two things they often looked at. And then two, to Vince's comment about Vince and Tony, one thing I would say is uh, earned is a lot different than inherited. And those are examples we talked about it before, too, where even if Vince is a billionaire, the money isn't the money as much as that's credit for winning the game. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And then when you've already you woke up, birthed, won winning the game, you, you, you just don't understand how it works. Yep. Well, I swear to God, when I, think, when I think about it, Chris, and I think about all the freaking matches and how great he was, bro, I can't remember like Bret Hart ever being hurt. 
I can't really? remember Bret Hart ever missing a show. And bro, he was he was the best there was. But that's part of being the best there was there was, bro. That's part of it. I don't remember him ever being out hurt. You think like for Darby obviously had a real passion to climb Mount Everest, right? Like it's something he really wanted to do, it's something he's been talking about for a while. These guys can understand and learn that you're already over like so these people aren't cheering you dying they're cheering what you've done who you are and what you mean to them so don't be afraid to scale back a little bit don't be afraid if it's not a huge big match on just doing the best of and making them happy because they're not going to think you did bad they're not going to think it's a bad match they're not going to Maybe they'll complain on the internet. Oh, it was only three and four, four fifths of the star. Shut two gives. Me. Like, protect yourself. Thank you. P protect yourself and like so you can go and do the things you really want to do and still do this at a high level. Yes. See, even see, I would push back to that psychologically for for a little bit because I I do I don't think that fans really care about the person more than the moment though. Like, I think that you can switch out Darby Allen and, and insert anybody else in there, and that's what the fans want. They want that type of <clears throat> Coliseum, uh, Ro that Roman Coliseum feel. They, 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 that's just, that's just how it's been. I mean, that's how Greco Roman wrestling was, you know, uh, way back in the ancient days. It, that was that, that, Greco-Roman, just just bloodthirsty crowd, you know, even from the days of Nero when he would just th throw people in there for the Lions and, and, you know, and fans would just just be bloodthirsty in the Coliseums. That mentality still is there. The, the mentality still exists. Man, I, I think don't. If you, if, you, if you throw someone else that does a Darby Allen spot, and even better than Darby Allen, even takes a 25-foot ladder instead of a 20 ladder. That's what the fans would enjoy, unfortunately, man. I disagree. I think if you ingrain yourself in their psyche and you've done enough to earn the respect and admiration that you can get away with. Like, I mean, I can remember Jeff Hardy being on live events for TNA and he's doing swantons of the floor. And it's like, Jeff, you don't have to. All you got to do is sell, hit a twist of fate, hit the swanton, pull off your shirt, hit the swanton. This place is going to go crazy. But that's their mindset, though. That's the wrestler's That's the wrestler's mindset that they always have to outdo themselves because they feel as if the fans aren't going to take them scaling back. They feel like they have to amp up in order to maintain that fan reaction. And I, th I think they should explore another option to save themselves and save yeah, the industry. Absolutely. I do agree with the bloodthirsty. Like, there are going to be some sick of fans out there. Oh, my God. He only did six coffin drops. In three exactly. <laughs> like, exactly. I think that's a minority that's just extremely loud. Not in that. AEW though. That that's that's the that is the AEW crowd. Now, it when it comes so to WWE, I think that that's a stronger argument. That is, it's not as many bloodthirsty people. There's just a bunch of marks who want to just be together and sing songs. At, at that point, it's just you know sing along with with the marks. But when it comes to AEW fans, it, it's a it's an ECW on steroids, man. It really yeah. is a, right. in that type of crowd. Yeah, and then it seems that interest has waned, viewership has declined, attendance has lessened, yep. that maybe it's not the right way. And then maybe you don't, they're going to be there no matter what. And you know what? They're probably going to complain no matter what. Yeah. But I, I still hearken back to when stupid fake pandemic, yeah, I said it, happened, and there's no audiences, and we're wrestling in front of nobody. Like we could have scaled all the way back because it didn't matter. We didn't have to up the ante and dive to the floor more because nobody's there and nobody's watching. We scaled back. Yeah, maybe people are tuning out a little bit. We're taking that step back, but it's only to take more steps forward when this stuff returns and we bring all these things back that we overuse and have no meaning now and we start really incorporating them in times that mean something. Wrestling would have been awesome. 
Let me let me say this. Let me ask you this, EC3, as far as what you disagree with me with. I'm gonna ask you this. If Darby Allen was gone from AEW for six months, and I'll let you answer this too, Vince, do you think he will be sorely missed by the fans? I think the show would go on. And I think you'd get a very good reaction upon return, and people would be happy to see him again. But then it would quickly return to status quo if there was no evolution of character style or work but i do think that's my point exactly yeah he's a machine you're absolutely right yeah he won't be sorely missed you won't get one if he was gone for six months you would not get one person chanting we want darby not one person saying that would would you agree with that maybe one but maybe, maybe, one. maybe, maybe his cousin, but I, that's my point. I mean, like they're not bought into the person, probably CM Punk, but that became a thing that became a wave and people, how group think works, people get caught into waves and they keep going with it just because it's the, the wave that they started. So they're, they want to make an impact, but at the end of the day, I mean, CM Punk chance because it was a thing. But you won't get we want Darby chance. People aren't sold in Darby enough to really be sold into his character versus the spots that he do when he runs. Do you think they would start the chance maybe four months into this? So we got two months to go and vignette started Aaron hyping it up. Then maybe this is a new version. Do you think we'd get him then? Or do you think it'd still be like, well, that'll be cool, I guess. I don't know. What's next? More falling off stuff. I, I, I think I think I think that it will be. I think the Tony Khan has conditioned the fans for shiny new toys. So if you had Darby Allen vignettes, that wouldn't impact anything because they would they would imagine Darby Allen coming back and and doing big spots, and that's what they they look at Darby Alley. Darby Allen, they're like, okay, he's the stunt man. He's the one that give us that bloodthirsty feel. So when he's in, we love for him to be in because he's about to break stuff and just outdo himself with spots. And that's what we like. That's the holy bleep moments. You want to set the internet on fire? Sure. Let's do it. How do we get there? Oni Khan has done more to harm wrestling than Vince Russo ever done. <laughs> Put that in your pipe and smoke it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> on that, on that, on that note, we have uh, Vince Russo. We have EC3. What's your What's your thoughts on Darby at the Darby Allen discussion, real quick, Vince? So as Vince yeah, Russo. yeah, bro, they they they, they don't care. I like Darby. Yeah. They don't they they don't care. They they they, they 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 they'd miss him for a week and then they'd forget all about him and it, and it would be the next guy doing the same thing. Absolutely. Yep. Vince Russo, EC3, Dr. Chris. This is the Wrestling Outlaws. Have a good night, buddy. Solo.